more just the like nostalgic, like because right. it was your first car. Yeah, I have good memories oh, of man. this. Is it not warmed up? I guess you don't have. Oh uh, no, I'm just not past my throttle position. Gotcha. I haven't. I have the throttle position set high enough where I can stay off the supercharger if I want to, but low enough where if I want to get on it, it's you know it's not too high up in my revs, you know, yeah. or my throttle position. So. so that's one thing you can do with the clutch pulley, which I won't be able to do on the MR2 until I would either find a clutch pulley that works or, yeah, well, that's really it. Right now, all I have is the fixed pulley, which actually, based on my measurements, um, should be perfect to make eight to 10 pounds of boost. So, um, yeah, it should work out perfect. Essentially, when you let off, you have a lot of that built-up pressure pushing back through the supercharger rotors. So it kind of has like a bark sound to it. Uh, the downside to it is you kind of you stall out your compressor. So if you're you know shifting that split second in between shifts, it's you know stalling your compressor. So whenever you go back on it, it's kind of, it's got to rebuild. Oh, man, I'm right. The main problem with it that I ran into with it not having a bypass valve is whenever I'm actually applying throttle. So what happens is that without the clutch engage, it's pulling air through the rotors of the compressor, which isn't being turned yet because the clutch is off. You know what I'm saying? So what happens is it's kind of in the low revs, like if you're at a stop sign or whatever, you know, you're coming off the clutch. Yeah. You're, it's kind of laggy. It's like okay. hard to get it to, you got to give it a lot of throttle to have it pull air through those rotors. Gotcha. So with the bypass valve, I have it fully recircling, but it's set at a low enough pressure that it helps with that because what it's allowing it to do is actually some of that air is able to pass through the bypass on the intake stroke, you know, on the intake side of it, rather than, you know, so it's able to kind of have a second passageway so there's less resistance, it's not pulling all the air in through the, the rotors of the supercharger that isn't, you know, engaged when the clutch yeah, is I think that makes I don't sense. Know how to so with a fixed pulley, you might not run it back. Yeah, with a fixed pulley, it'd be a lot more responsive, you know, but because I have mine where it's not always on, Whenever it's not on, you know, you have the resistance of it's, it's trying to suck in air through a restrictive device. You know, supercharger is restrictive when it's not doing anything. So it's just pulling, it's trying to pull air through it so you get a laggy feeling to it when you're, when you're not on the supercharger. I still felt like I heard a little bit of like that burp sound. Yeah, there's still some of it. It just kind of quieted it down. So yeah. that, you know, paired with, I could feel a difference in the way the car, the response of the car in, you know, whenever I wasn't on the supercharger. But that paired with that noise, you know, on the, when I'm letting off the throttle and you got that, that throttle plate closing up and you got that build up of pressure that quieted that bark down a lot, which told me that there's air, you know, making its way out through that bypass valve and back and recirculate through the supercharger, so, right. which I kind of like the balance. I mean, you get a little bit of a, like, recirc sound, but you also still have some of that blitz, like, signature sound that everyone is used to hearing on yeah. blitz kits on these cars. And the reason that he doesn't run a blow-off valve, correct me if I'm wrong, is that the math is actually before the supercharger. So the air coming into the supercharger, if you'd run a blow-off valve after the supercharger, you're gonna lose all that air that already came through the math. And then the air that's actually going into your engine is incorrect about it. Right, at that point your metered air is, uh, what, you know, what your computer has metered versus what the engine's seeing is different. So you'll get like a rich spike and it's just, it's not a, it causes 
drivability issues and it's just probably hard to tune practice. probably hard to tune it yeah because then the, you get fluctuations which are hard to tune around and stuff so i just made it full research um, because of the pull through map whereas so, on the mr2 i'm planning on leaving the math directly before the throttle body at least that'll be my first iteration of the supercharger kit so um so all the air that's going into the throttle body will be metered exactly how it's going in. So I'm gonna plan on running a blow off valve. I did get a kind of hybrid diverter type of deal, similar to Lakes, but that I could uh, decide if I wanna recirc, blow off, or close, pretty much. Which in that case, I just take it out. Should be cool. Yeah, I've, on my list of things at some point, uh, that was one thing that I wanted to do was relocate my math. set up uh, just because I think it makes a little bit more sense because uh, you're metering exactly what's going in to your engine um, so but you know it works the way it, it is right now and that's the way Blitz set it up so now part I mean the kit was already kind of expensive to begin with so I think some things they did to keep it cheaper a lot of factory cars have a pull through map so it's not, it's not uncommon. Dude, it's got good power, honestly. It kind of, the pull kind of reminds me of the RX-8. Yeah, it, it definitely gives it some guts compared to its factory. Yeah, I was looking here, it's like, it's probably closer to six or so. Six pounds. Um, whenever it's in lift, it should be around six pounds because of the extra uh, valve lift that you get. So the resistance in the whole intake system goes down at that point. So the, you're actually building less pressure because you're flowing more through the... Yeah, that makes sense. So, yes, yeah, so the other way I could read the boost was uh, on my... AEM interface to the FIC because that has a built-in uh, loose pressure gauge. You know, whenever I have my laptop hooked up to it, I could I could watch it real time or I could log it. Most of the time, it was done through logging because you know it's just simply not safe to really be doing anything on the laptop while you're driving. But um, so that was another way I could log it and see what I was getting. But I don't know if I could really necessarily give with full comp give you an answer on what how many pounds of boost the car makes <laughs> it does seem like five or six at full throttle if i'm in lift that's about what it is but the gauge is a little bit of ways off you know it's not right off the engine so you're going to get some pressure drop there <laughs> Like well, I've just only ridden in a few cars that are actually like fast. I don't know. Yeah, I mean the RX-8 just pulls hard, you know, so and most like even a Celica GTS stock like it's quicker than maybe most No, you can do boost whatever you want <laughs> No, like, I, I mean, I, I'm sure a Celica GTS, like, is quicker than most cars in lift, but it's not like a LS swapped RX-8. Like, it's not a 300 horsepower RX-8, so. Yeah, there's but, definitely, it's not competing power-wise, but, but you it get does up have to, a weight. Right, you get up to man. 220, 230 horsepower in a 2,500-pound car, and you're getting close. I think the RX-8. RX, Back in storage. Yep. Wait, give me a little. Thanks for 
watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and have a good night.